This is Toby and Bernie, the Boulets. They're both teachers and also parents to two amazing kids, Mariko and Logan. Logan loved hockey. More so, he loved the team. He was a quiet leader on and off the ice. The kind of kid who visited neighbors just because. Who loved changing oil with his grandpa. Who sang Disney songs while doing dishes with his sister. And who ate his weight in waffles on their trip to Paris and Brussels in 2017. It's one of my favorite memories with him, says Mariko. Ask anyone who knew Logan and they'll tell you that he was kind to teammates, family, friends, and strangers too. They'll tell you he made people feel like they mattered. And they'll tell you he mattered. Logan was on the Humboldt Broncos bus when it tragically crashed in 2018. He was 21, and he was an organ donor. Nearly a year before, Logan's fitness mentor Rick passed away suddenly. Rick was an organ donor and saved the lives of six other people. Logan was inspired by Rick. He wanted to be an organ donor if he passed, says Toby. He told me, if Rick can save six lives, then I can too. A little under a year later, Logan also saved six lives. The Humboldt Broncos bus crash gripped the nation and the global hockey community. When Logan's family honored his decision to donate his organs, Logan's legacy was born. The Logan Boulay effect. He inspired thousands of people across the country to register as organ donors. This launched Green Shirt Day, a national day to build awareness for organ donation. I am incredibly proud of Logan, says Bernie. His decision and desire to be an organ donor has made an incredible difference in Canada and the world. Though we have lost Logan on this earth, Toby adds, I know that he is present in his legacy. It takes two minutes to save a life, or six, like Logan. Find out how to register as an organ donor at organtissuedonation.ca. Well, hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. My name is Tim Hepworth and I have replaced uh, Dana with a much more handsome fellow over here. Why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, Brent Struthers. Mr. Brent Struthers. We need Brent to get his mouth on the mic so we can hear his beautiful voice. Get it on the mic. There it is. There All it right. Is. Yes. All right. Brent, uh, he treated us tonight, guys. He, uh, he came down, made us an awesome meal. We've uh, <clears throat> decided to keep him as a full-time chef on all Thursday Night Lives, so he's uh, going to put some kilometers on the old vehicle. That's right. Thursday nights, here we come. <laughs> uh, nice that Dana could stay upstairs and uh, clean up after the mess we Yeah, made. I know. He's up there slaving. That apron looked good on him, though. Uh, oh, it did. 
And that pink tutu. Oh, yeah. Well, I wasn't going to tell the people about that, but that's okay. And it's so, something that will never be erased out of my mind. Never. Not even, no, not for a second. But Brent, why don't you introduce yourself? Let us know where you're from, what you do, and uh, yeah. Uh, Brent Struthers, Calgary, Alberta, in the oil patch, and uh, came upon Thursday Night Live a couple seasons ago. Yeah. And I've been hooked ever since. Yeah, literally. Uh, literally. Literally. <laughs> and uh, it's been great to uh, develop the relationship, and uh, looking forward to the float that I've got booked with you, Tim, and uh, yeah, as well as me Dana, too. Uh, coming up in July. Yeah, I mean, the one with me will definitely better be better, but I mean, are you going with me first or him first? Well, we're going with uh, Dana first, and then uh, I oh, get perfect. you the following Monday. Oh, perfect. Well, yes. that, that's exactly the order I'd want it to be. Yeah, I don't exactly. want you disappointed at the start, so right. it's... Save the best for last. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. Well, everybody, we are super happy to have you with us. As you can see, we are representing Green Shirt Day. Um, what is that? Well, we're going to go into that a little bit more uh, later in the show, um, but something we're super passionate about. And um, yeah, we'll go into that a little bit more. Um, but before we do that, do um, you have anything else to share with the lovely people of Thursday Night Live? Well, this is Thursday Night Live, season four, episode 16. 16. You know what that means? We're almost done. Yeah, it's sad when you think about it. Yeah. One more month, guys, and this is over for the season. You That's bet. sad. But before we uh, go any further, we do want to thank our sponsors. And so we're going to cut over to that so you can see what they're all about. Have a good night, folks. See ya. the amount of time we spend in front of our vices. Don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Aw, oh, Hot. Coming hot in. Hot darn, folks. <laughs> I've got to say up. that I replaced Brent because uh, yeah, well. the kitchen was clean and the tutu <laughs> was ironed for him. Ready to go uh, for Tracks Pub. Welcome back to another episode of Thursday Night Live Flight Time. I'm actually the real Dana Lottery. <laughs> I may, may or may still, not be still Tim Everett. <laughs> still, shake that mic. Grab that mic again he's like gotta, you did. Yeah, there you go. It. Sometimes you got to know where it's Just at. Just in case yeah, anyone's watching and that's what they like to watch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah. what do we do here on Thursday Night Live Flight Time? We tie some flies, we drink some beers, and we tell some lies. Clearly, <laughs> you could see Brent before here was mistaken. And he's going with you first. Is he? Yeah, no, okay, so he well. doesn't even know his own schedule. <laughs> Maybe he won't show up to either oh, of those. Well, either way. So disappointment will happen <laughs> right oh, off the hop. Oh, come on now. And All then right, uh, well. he'll be in the good boat in oh. a second. So, Brad, check your calendar we'll see. because we'll see. you were so far off. You were almost little. in 2023. Oh, no. All right, so tonight's flies. We'll go over that. We'll go over the green shirt day. Okay, yeah. super cool. Uh, something close to home and uh, very passionate about is the green shirt day. So, but you guys matter most. And so let's talk about it. Where are you at? Where are you from? What are you drinking? Yeah. Apparently our good friend Chaz <sighs> yep. got us on to these Medjitos. The Look at that. Look at my camera just did. That's like the first time yep, in like yep, because 20 episodes. <sighs> can't can't get enough of these. Grab guys. my face. Focus on me, focus on you. Let us know where you're from, what you're drinking, and what is your favorite part about Thursday Night Live fly tying because yeah. Tim popped or proposed a special question mm -hmm. in did. the quick tie that he almost didn't <laughs> get through. Oh, man. You're going to not want to miss those ones because... Uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Havens from Strathmoor. Strathmoor. Cam's drinking a Rainier in his kitchen, as, as always. <laughs> Uh, John apparently hasn't paid the power bill in a week <laughs> since last Thursday. And Troy uh, Maharishi can't feel his face. Uh, I can't feel my face when I'm with you, 
but I like oh. it. You were in the coats today. He was that, doing some Eminem earlier, too. That, I know. Singing. He just needs me to lay down. Cookville, beat. Tennessee, sipping Jack and Coke. Jack and Coke. That's Coke. not a bad option. That's a O, not an A. Kake. Kake. All right, Dylan Ducher is from Red Deer, Alberta, and up, he's babe? drinking, we don't know. Craig Jones' best part is the TNL fam. Mm. And uh, we don't know why Cam is asking for a beating, but he is. Uh, Who knows? That's what Cam does. So uh, that's kind of how it is. If this is your first time here, well, come. Well, (laughs) welcome. Welcome. There actually isn't a pause there. (laughs) Welcome back. Welcome to. And we'll do it again. There's no left flat time. Yeah, so uh, what we do have tonight is a Trax Pub meetup. Yeah. So a uh, round of clicks for all the fine folks at Trax Pub who are down there drinking some beer. They have Riverfest on tap. If you didn't know, oh, now you do. Now you do. Uh, make sure you tip those waitresses because they're doing a bang up job as always. As always. And yep. the pizza is two for one at Trax Pub oh, tonight. Pizza night, yeah. <sighs> we, we'll we be down there right yep, after yep. the show. So we're going to get tie in right now so we can get out of here by 720. <laughs> I might be a little quick. I mean, I'm quick, but not that quick. Pipke Panorama Hills, Suburbia, with my watermelon lime. Ah, oh, nice. uh-huh. nice. Pipke. Click, click, click. Wes is in the house from hey, Chubbuck, Idaho. What's up, buddy? And he's drinking a tall boy Pepsi. Oh, yeah. Getting the caffeine and the sugar and all making it one. happen. So, that's about all I got for you guys in this early entry scene because I'm so <laughs> excited to show you guys uh, show what we people. got next. Show the people. Because we always kind of do what we call, well, Tom's here, and he's drinking Adroit IPA in rainy Baltimore. Oh, nice. And uh, Claude is into the Honey Brown, and Colleen's into the GT. Gin and tonic. The Ooh. great uh, uh, tea. Yeah. It's like iced tea, but it's great. <laughs> it's great tea. <laughs> oh, we got some more comments. We're not going to leave this scene. And uh, Rodrigo is a good bourbon. Uh, that's why I end up tying. That's why I don't. <laughs> I think you meant to say don't end up tying anything, but that's okay because Tim's quick ties also got a little sloppy. They may have, and we might have had. We didn't. I didn't. We did restart. I tried not to. Yeah, we. But oh, I yeah, had to. You had to. And it wasn't BC my fault. is back, Mr. Bruce Cameron. Oh, what's up, buddy? Home and ready to tie before the Flames game. Well, Bruce, <laughs> you put that Flames game yeah. over here. Yeah. And you watch it on silence, okay? <laughs> that's and right. You listen to us. We're not friends. Oh, come on, Bruce. Come uh, on. Clint's on the road to get his table, and he could have stayed here and joined everybody. No, he but had, he decided he had, he no. He said he, he had some no. uh, Pilates with his wife to do, so we can't. Oh, we gotta... and he had to pick up Steve from uh, Hit H I I T. Yeah. Or maybe no, he was in the Bell. The... Steve's, Steve's over there pouring him a drink. Yeah. Cool boys. Cool. Appreciate it. <laughs> Didn't even stop by to say hi. Well, there's there's Steve. Clint, your material's unpacked and a cold beer's waiting. Oh, look at those two. Without They're friends so cute. like Steve, yeah. I don't know where a guy like Clint ends up. <laughs> uh, good. Uh, Nick says he's going to need a good beer to celebrate if my daughter gets her first brook trout in the Maryland Mountains tomorrow. 38 and oh. snow should be fun. Uh, yeah. Well, Nick, that's when the photos are the best. Great photos. It's going to happen. Yep. I got a feeling. I got a feeling. See? I know. <laughs> well, without much further ado, folks, let's head over no, we, and we check out. We don't even out need other music. The bromance? <laughs> We're us. We're I us. should turn this off. Yeah, just turn it all off. We'll see. Uh, cancel subscriptions and <laughs> cue us. All right. Well, let's check out the news scene. Let's check out kind the of news. Why I decided to do this was because I kept forgetting to do sort of the announcements. Can I? Can I do weather? I hope. I hope <laughs> it's good. Is it good? <laughs> it's Hang good. On. Let let's go. check it. Let me just do let's something check here. Okay, breaking news. Breaking news coming to you live from the DNL studio. <laughs> it's a balmy Still 20 degrees out there, folks. Still breaking. There we are, oh. folks. TNL News. What's happening, good people? Oh, this is really good. Well done. Thank I you. Like this overlay. I, I, <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. We're live at 714 and 55 seconds. This is the TNL news segment of the day. So if you guys have news that you need put into the TNL news segment, yes. uh, hit us up. We would love to share your news before Let's we get tying some flies. So what we need to go <laughs> over first is make sure that you get your pre-order 
for your sun shirts because tomorrow, tomorrow. it goes in and you will never, ever, ever have I ever, ever, ever. <sighs> they that's broke the, best, the show. That's, that's the best part Blake about this. We broke the show. How do we break the show? Are we not there? Did we go off the air? No, nah, we're here. It's not Jim's birthday. We're still on the <laughs> air. Okay. So we got a couple things here to announce. And the first one, folks, is to make sure that you head over to that website right there. Mm-hmm. Download yourself a Fly Ingo, a Watermaster Fly Ingo card. Okay, because we play bingo. We call it Fly Ingo, but we play like a bingo. And Tim, this is the time that you're going to show the good people. No, I'm downloading <laughs> my bingo card. That's right. I also got a bingo card tonight. I'm getting mine, guys. I'm winning. <laughs> and uh, make sure, what time do we have till tomorrow for the shirts? Um, I don't know. Sometime tomorrow. I really don't know. Probably if you need more time. You don't uh, need more time. You just need to order right now. It is. It is A.A. Ron's birthday, which oh. could make us do also A. an Ron. announcement. Let's do and that. We can do that right here inside the news scene. Birthday? Happy birthday, Mr. Aaron. I don't know if he's here. I was waiting till he tuned in to do this, but Chaz struck me early. Happy, so. happy, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy it's birthday. Your birthday. It's your happy. happy All right. You. If it's your birthday, let us know because we would like to sing and play. Yes. Somebody order some. The birthday song. <laughs> no, that's just a flying go card. So anyways, folks, uh, head over there and get your flying go Watermaster cards or you yes. will not be able to play with us at the uh, halftime show. So Tim is now going to show you <laughs> what there is. Okay. So, guys, we got some. But Last just wait. Week, all the prizes were won, weren't they? They're all gone. How were they won? Because they got through the doors of doom. Doors of doom. Doors of doom. So remember, when you win bingo, you still have to beat the doors of doom. If you don't know what the doors of doom are, don't hate the player, hate the game. Or hate the creator. One of the three. <laughs> it's all it's the same. It is, it's all three. No, it's all the same. Okay. Uh, well, guys, what, what, do we do we, what do we have for you tonight? We got uh, some of these awesome camouflage looking airlocks and some bright colors. Um, those are great indicators, by the way. We have our $100 uh, pack from Shore, which is a whole bunch of variety of uh, tying materials. The you indicators know, came from our friends down at Wolf Creek Anglers. Oh, Wolf Creek Anglers, yes. We have an awesome camel trucker hat from our friends over at BFE Flyco. Thank you very much, Bob, for that. We've got a Trax Pub signature shirt. Okay, so that's a nice yeah. t-shirt. Uh, no, it's the same cards. It'll be the same cards for the rest <clears throat> of the year. Yeah. And we got this awesome... Sims uh, hoodie also coming to you from Wolf Creek Anglers. Wolf Creek Anglers. That is not a cheap thing. And yeah. then we have this awesome dry bag, guys. Like a full. Uh, this is backpack, a large dry large, bag. You large put your kid in there. Bag. Your wife. Yeah, and this one comes Whatever. from uh, Fly Fishing Board Outfitters. So that is the prizes that are on uh, the docket tonight. Up and if they don't get one, grabs. then they're just gonna keep going till Double next week. Double the prize. So, having said that, Scott Bergie's in the house, and this guy probably too humble but he is an absolute phenomenal i would say streamer tire it's all i've ever seen him post oh, and yeah. uh Mr. he ties up some like mini dungeons i mean i i would like to see them in my hands maybe i wish with i would like to hold your your mini dungeons your mini dungeons scott just, just saying uh yeah super good tire welcome coming here welcome a lot of good tires like john he could tie up a red worm like the best <laughs> Buying <laughs> um, up on the hoodie tomorrow. Get your hoodie. So, okay, we got that. Cool. Everybody's got their flying goes. We don't want any excuses to why people don't have the ability to participate. So, download them. They're free. They're free. You just type in your email and it's free. It costs you nothing. You win, you get through the doors of doom, and we ship it to you for free. Absolutely no charge. That's because our sponsors are absolutely super awesome and they make all of this happen. Especially Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. They go over the top for us. Yes, and you they guys. Do. They certainly do. Okay, we've talked about the sun shirts. There they are. All four. They kind Those of aren't right. The, Those aren't the, right. Sorry, got right. the wrong one on there. <laughs> <laughs> I switched the logo. Whoopsie daisies. But if you can imagine what it would be, <laughs> be like if, 
<laughs> if I had the right oh, ones man. up there. But what is important about these sunshirts, guys, is this is like a one-time thing. So every year we're going to bring out a new series of probably that's four. That's a good point. That's and good point. this is your only chance to get them. So there's not going to be this massive uh, stock, nothing like that. These are a one-time pre-order. You order them. When we get them, they come to you. You're not going to be able to get them again. So if you really like them and you really want them, which you should, and you will. And how we'll do you get them? them? You just yeah, head, head over, over here. Yeah, head over to the website and uh, order them up. Uh, this off. Yeah. Oh, that off. There it's they just are again, folks. <laughs> Sorry about that. Things got a little rush here when Brent uh, made us pulled pork. So flyfisherbarber.com and you get your sun shirts. Pre order your sun shirts, head yes. out, check them out. They go in tomorrow and then they're gone. Mm -hmm. Like Tim said, never have you ever wish you would have gotten something <laughs> more than so this. So quick. Uh, All right, Elaine so let's Lee. talk about Mr. it, Elaine, Mr. Elaine Lee. So what he's uh, got, he brought up a good point. I want to touch on this. So uh, he gave it's away. It's coming. It's in the announcement. It? Okay, yeah. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna ruin it's it. In Go the ahead. Announcements. Go ahead. All right, so well, we can start backwards if you want to start no, with that. No, that's good. Go ahead. Let's keep going. It's right here. Oh well then. Okay, so big deal, guys. Final episode, um, <clears throat> May fifth. Huge. We, we do a huge giveaway. We are going to tie some flies that night. We might run a little bit long because we do a ton of these giveaways. So what it is, um, you make you go to our website. This is going to be, we'll let you know when it's open, but you make a $5 donation, gets you one entry in. And that entry is for all the signet, all the prizes. It doesn't just mean you go in once. If you get yeah. drawn, your name comes out. No, it goes back it stays in. in. We use a system that randomly chooses. Um, and for instance, uh, <coughs> this is Mr. Elaine Lee. Oh, he, uh, yeah. he tied us a whole bunch of pike flies last year. So there there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes from the Mr. GNL Edmonds group. won that. Yeah, Mr. That Edmonds was did. so a pike fly is like thirty to fifty dollars. He had like <laughs> legit four dozen in there. Oh, it's crazy. So lots of prizes. Um, some of them are coming from our sponsors, most of them from our sponsors, but also a lot of them are coming from you guys. So it's the community giving back. Um, what this does is generate uh, some funds to keep the show going and yep. get us into next season and um, so yeah, we'll we'll 100%. keep you updated on that and how it comes out and when you can start purchasing those. And when tickets. we announce that, yeah, it's yep. five dollars a donation to the show. Five dollars gets you one entry. Uh, Hundred dollars gets you twenty entries, and uh, and on and on and on. You can kind of see how that works. So uh, the more you donate, the more entries you get. There's things like fly rods, fly reels, uh, fly tying kits. There's uh, what's the one from Fish Pond like that? Three or four hundred dollar oh, like travel travel case for all your time. Yeah, there's a uh, Reddington butter stick. There's a Norvice. There's an extravagant fly tying table. There's oh yeah, um, oh, man. like the list. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars <laughs> of, of flies stuff. in fly boxes. Uh, I'm just trying to think of everything that's sitting out there uh, that yeah. is up for grabs. I would probably guarantee you. Guest, Garrett, guest into you. <laughs> Guaranteed that there's. Yeah, Eric won a fly rod last year. John won an absolute huge package last year, and uh, so that's one you guys really uh, don't want to miss. And yeah. something else we already talked about was the Watermaster wraps of flying go at halftime. Don't go anywhere, uh, or if you do, make sure you come back and time it properly. And uh, also, we want to mention to you guys that Attracts Pub on April 15th at 8 p.m. for everybody there. Uh, Rod and the Mods is in the house yeah. on, uh, I think that's Good Friday, but it'll be a better Friday if you check out Rod and the Mods. Yeah. And then uh, good music, good music. Rocky Mountain Fly Shop also wants everybody to know that they have all new, a whole bunch of new fly inventory. They've also got a clearance section slash used section, which you can also order online. So make sure you go over to RockyMountainFlyShop.net. Check out the good stuff there. And then I'm uh, kind of going to go in order of importance, and we'll save the important part to last. Mm -hmm. But uh, tonight's flies, like we said earlier, we're going to be tying up the simple Chernobyl. Chernobyl. So which yeah. What are we doing first? Uh, we're going to do the PFD Rusty Spinner All right, first. So which kind that. of thread should everybody Yeah, so we're going to use something together. a little bit smaller. So if you're tying out of our kits tonight, um, you're going to use uh, probably some brown thread if you have it, or black. We're not really showing the thread, but you're going to want to go a little smaller too. I'm using UTC 70 or something in that 6-aught, 8-aught range. Um, and then for our next fly, I'm going to be using a UTC 140, a little bit heavier because we're working with foam. 
Now, one of the big important things we want to say about this, guys, if you are not tying out of our kit, that doesn't exclude you. Head to our website, go to TNL. Um, S4. Yeah. Oh, man, just heard this earlier. Yeah, backslash TNLS4 on our website. And what it's going to do is when it takes you in there, you're going to see a fly recipe for everything. So even if you don't tie out of our kits, it's going to give you a material list so you know what you need to tie. Um, it's, we're trying to be very inclusive in this. If you don't have our kit, that's okay. Um, but, yeah, so we're going to be going through those two flies tonight, two real simple, but if I could say simple, but probably some of the most effective flies out there. Um, yeah, these are going to be it. Simple wins. Yeah, simple wins. Uh, so Joel, who's won every single flow trip we've given away, <laughs> Yeah. Asked if there's any flow trips in the final draw. It's a good and question. And I know last year I think there was two. Yeah, I would say so, I would be surprised if there was not. Yeah, I would be shocked. Like really shocked. When so you, maybe when enter. you got ten thousand dollars worth of giveaways, I'm probably saying that on the light end. Yeah. Anybody can win. Anybody can win. You donate five dollars to the show, and there you go. Stonefly shirts ordered. I do want to say something. I've had people concerned. If they've used the Apple Pay option, the order, I have not seen the order. So if you have used Apple Pay option and you feel like you have a shirt ordered, let me know. Also, because if you didn't get an order confirmation, probably you didn't, uh, it didn't go through. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, the most important thing that we need to talk about here and what this t night's all about is what we call Green Shirt Day. Mm -hmm. um, so four years ago, in uh, <clears throat> um, in Humboldt, a lot of you guys might have heard of the story, but there was uh, a tragic bus accident uh, with a bunch of young hockey players ranging from the age of 15 to 21. Um, so that the anniversary for that tragic event was yesterday and um, absolutely uh, gripped the world. I have a little video that we're going to show you guys kind of a um, little more about the story here. Uh, but green shirt day. So uh, Logan Boulay is one of the players um, who uh, passed away in the bus accident. Um, if there's a positive takeaway in this situation, what happened with Logan Boulay was that he had signed his organ donor card. And because he had done that, six people's lives were saved um, after the tragedy that took place in Humboldt. And so kind of what they call the Logan Boulay effect is the fact that once people started finding out about this, that Logan had actually signed his organ donor card, there was an an exponential spike in Canada of people going and signing their organ organ donor card. Um, and so kind of what we do in memoriam of Logan is uh, we celebrate with what they call the green shirt day. And so it's to just remind people that if you haven't signed your organ donor card, if it's something you want to do and you can sign up for um, and you feel compelled to do it, I know that that's, totally a personal decision and nobody's being forced uh but just kind of in this um yeah in memorial of logan boulay and the great kid that he was it's just kind of something to remind us that uh things like that do happen and if we have that ability to uh share um our or our organs um then that's a beautiful thing. And yeah. I know for a fact that uh, there was a few kids that were in the in the crash in Humboldt that I, I coached. And um, yeah, so feel free to sign your cards. And uh, I know that I went out right after that and I didn't even know I didn't have anything signed. I didn't know I had to actually like go say yeah. But go, go do it uh, because I think it's pretty cool and uh, let's keep the memory going with Green Shirt Day mm -hmm. uh, every year. And so tonight we'll celebrate Logan, we'll celebrate everything that he was and I know talking with uh, his dad Toby the past couple days, um, yeah, they're just trying to put a positive spin on this and so 
knowing the effect that we can have that you guys can have by signing your organ 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 donor card um that's the ripple effect that logan would be uh, super proud of so yeah. that's green shirt day we're gonna have a little video that i kind of poached from tsn hope it doesn't do bad things to us <laughs> at the show here um but uh yeah that's the announcements that we got we're gonna jump into tying some flies here right away so the first fly that we're gonna tie tim will take us through it but mm -hmm. first before we do that mr struthers also ripped up the oh, baking man. cam look at that what does he got going on with this concoction oh we don't know but if you stick around and if you're at tracks pub he took some of these whatever it turned out to be <laughs> with him and for that we'll find out shortly what mr what struthers put together for the baking cam oh yeah I'm gonna be good all right let's tie some flies All right, folks, let's uh, let's get on to some fly tying. So we're, again, working out of our season. Where is the number? It's a four. Ah, oh, there it is. Season four, episode 16. We are tying. <clears throat> um, if you look in the back of your kit, you're going to see there's some foam. Uh, there's another fly below. It's very simple. So tonight, um, for both of these flies, the material lists are <laughs> very limited. There's not much to them. Um, but these patterns are, you know, old as the day is long, and they are super effective. And uh, a couple of my actual favorites from the season. Um, <clears throat> this first one we're going to tie is called a rusty spinner, PFD rusty spinner. So spinner, not sinner. <laughs> spinner. <laughs> well, and if you watch the quick ties, you're going to see some more <laughs> mumble fumble jumble. <laughs> Jeez. Some days the words don't come as easy as others. Um, but yeah, so what you're going to see in your kit here is you're going to have uh, some hooks. You're going to have a little piece of brown yarn. And you're going to have, yeah, that's actually about it, to be honest. There's very few there's very few materials. Um, but be careful when you open it, because the one thing that is in here is these mayfly tail material. It's a synthetic material that is actually super difficult to see. So um, when you're pulling them out, be super careful. If you can see there, just up against my shirt, you can see how fine those are. Um, we've got a little clump of those for you, um, but they are super tiny. And, and if you do lose fine. them, what could you do in the house to get more? Well, just go find <laughs> a horse, I guess. A paintbrush. <laughs> oh, the paintbrush. Yeah, that's true. Paintbrush. Yeah. It's better than the horse. A horse. Than the horse. <laughs> a horse. Go get the horse. <laughs> get the Cody horse. likes the rusty sinner better. I bet you he likes the rusty trombone even more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's too much. Um, so anyways, as you're going into your kit, be careful. Don't drop anything out. Um, but let's talk a little bit about this pattern. So what is a spinner? You hear the term spinner fall. You hear the term spinner. What is that? Well, it refers to a stage in a mayfly's life when after depositing their eggs in the water, they die. It's uh, Most of their life is lived under the water. And then the last little bit is kind of the, the big deal where they go, they lay their eggs, they fly around, they have a good time. And then unfortunately, they pass away. But what it does is it puts a whole bunch of them on the water um, and they're very vulnerable to be eaten. They're already dead and the fish don't really have to work very hard to get them. They're not jumping on the water. They're not trying to get them while they're sitting or depositing their eggs. They're actually able to grab these um, right off the water as kind of a, a dead bug. And a lot of times if you're really attentive when you're on the river, you'll see them. They'll be in a lot of them. You'll, they'll gather in little back eddies anywhere. Excuse me, where the water's a little slower they'll be eaten just about anywhere but where your eye is going to see them is mostly in those spaces um, so yeah keep your eyes out for them you might see them but honestly this is a one fly pattern that has changed the game for me when it came to um, figuring out how to prolong catching fish during a hatch or to really to be honest to catch a tough fish so how do you know the fish is tough how do i know it's tough because they difficult. won't even won't difficult even so why do you tie it in the rusty colored well folks that's interesting and the answer is because when the mayflies die, they kind of take on a rusty grayish dead color. So uh, a lot of people think that this, the, this fly could be tied or should be tied in like the colors of your mayfly. But there's people that will argue that the rusty color is that of a spinner mayfly, yeah. no matter the species of the mayfly. I don't know. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Yeah. That's up to you and not up to me. It rhymed. 
true true story <clears throat> but yeah guys that's that's a little bit of what this fly is and as we tie it out you'll kind of see why it looks the way it does okay so i'm gonna go ahead and grab my thread i'm tying with some utc 70 something a little smaller i'm tying it in this uh kind of <clears throat> mahogany slash copper brownie color um before you start putting your thread on your hook i want you to pull a nice long tag off something around the six inch um Tim length and if you don't know what that looks like get a measuring tape because there's nothing else on your body that's proportionally equal uh, so show us what six <laughs> inches looks like to you this is the time when trish pops in <laughs> yeah she never is here with her this stuff that doesn't matter um i'm yes. gonna work my <laughs> I'm, I'm oh, hey <laughs> i'm just a realist yeah it's true i know yeah so we're gonna work our thread back um to somewhere just before the hook bend so you don't want it to fall off the hook bend you want to be back a smidge so it's still up on the, the vertical or the sorry the horizontal plane in the shank um leave that long tag okay we're going to use this tag so just kind of set it off to the side or get it in your material clip um something like that we just want it out of the way now the first material we're going to go ahead and tie in is going to be the synthetic uh, legs here legs <laughs> tails so <clears throat> you'll see on a back of a mayfly you often have two to three um, of these long tails that come off the back end of the body uh, we're gonna grab two or three doesn't matter because we're gonna splay them um, so whether it's two or three is really irrelevant I'll, for the sake of argument I'll grab three here um, keeping the tips aligned though so when they come they come on a kind of a little patch type thing so if you peel them off and grab them and hold them they should be in, uh, in a good shape you can't, you can't stack these they're very fine it's very difficult so what I need to do is I need to tie these off the back of this pattern and I'm going to tie them in right where I left my thread. Now when I measure this, I want to come in and measure about two and a half lengths. So one, two, and set it off the back. Now that looks like it's way back there, I get it. Um, but if you've ever seen a mayfly, you know their tail is significantly longer than their overall body. So we need to hang those way off the back. Now I'm going to switch hands, I'm going to hold it with my other um, hand. I'm gonna do a little uh, count clockwise spin for me, counterclockwise if you're uh, tying with your right hand, I'm a left handed tire. Uh, that's gonna cause my thread to jump rearward and grab that material. I'm gonna take one, two, three loose wraps, not uh, doing anything else with it. Then I'm gonna come and make sure that, that, that those tail fibers are right up on top of the hook shank, okay? So once I, I got them and I feel that they're good and they're up on top and I got a decent length on them, those might be a touch long, that still gives you the ability to um, still gives you the ability to change the length so I check them I'm gonna go just a smidge longer good like that and now what I want to do is I want to take some tension wraps so get that tag a thread out because we still need that take some tension wraps and make sure you bind those butts down so they're not going anywhere not changing um, the length they're moving around at all then we can trim trim out those tags trim. <laughs> uh, then we're gonna move our thread back to where we left um, Train them. Train them. Train them. Tame them. All right. Trying to switch moods with the music and it's not working. Not working. Not working. <clears throat> so the reason we left this thread here, guys, what we're trying to do is take this back, kind of straight back. Just slow down. Sean said, SOS. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Well, that's a All good right. thing to say. SOS. What does SOS mean? It just means we're going to uh, stop the show and wait for you guys to catch up. For whatever reason, let us know when you're ready to rock and roll again. Sean, we're he is hurry. at Grand Prairie or Peace River Fly Tying Club. And they're gathered. They're gathered. They're There's no gathered. rush. We're in no rush. They're so all gathered. So we'll go back to the breaking news. Uh, got some more news? No. Oh, okay. Well. But I just thought just we'd like go back to it. <laughs> just like pressing that button. All right. I like <laughs> pressing that button. But more so, what I want to do, I should have, I, I screwed up. But the sun shirts, the sun shirts, okay, these the folks, these are not them. <laughs> so what I need to say is not them. Not them. Not them. But if you head over to our website, you can definitely see it. Yeah, them. we're going to go SOS until Sean gives us the all okay from the folks up in Grand Prairie. Uh -huh. <laughs> because we've got a group gathering at a pub up there, and we got a group gathering at Tracks Pub. Yes, we do. And if anybody in either location wants to patch in, yeah, that's cool you too. Could do that. You could do that. I mean, it looks oh. like Ben's over there taking his clothes off at Tracks Pub. So, man, well, <laughs> that's that's a good point. Okay, so I can't do what I wanted to do because. You just can't. Uh, maybe. You know, I just wanted to show the shirts, but. I know, I know. What I could do you without could crashing the show is hopefully go. 
do this. Do getting brave here, folks. <laughs> Sean says he'll patch in. Sean, Sean will patch up. Oh, now he's brave. Now uh, he's before brave. he said no, I'm not gonna patch in, and now he said, "Sign me up, coach. I'm gonna <laughs> patch in." Put me in, coach. What's your favorite shirt, Tim? This is for the TNL fam. This one here. Oh, my favorite uh, shirt. I'm pretty partial to the brown show shirt, but. Yeah, see, look at this one here. Brown trout, OQP, only quality. People, that's definitely up on yeah. the list. Brown no trout. No idea M1. how to get this one off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I and you I had to break the show. Uh, I know how to get it off the show. It's right there. There it is. So we'll take the SOS off. We're going to scroll this one down. We're going to put it over there. And you guys, that's just... <laughs> whew, I did it. <laughs> you did it. Woo. Sort of. Sort of, sort of. It wasn't as smooth as CNN was. Uh, <laughs> that is a okay. good one. Okay, that's a good one. There's no love. Whew. Let's put this down here in that folder right over there. Like Jacob ordered that there. one. Jacob ordered that one. Jacob was gonna come tonight, but he got called into work. He was gonna come down to Tracks uh, Pub. Lame, lame. Ah. Uh, got that one on the way too. Nice. Make sure you guys head over, order your shirts. Let's get back to this rusty spinner. Sean's got the boys all caught up. Let's do it. All right, all guys. Right. So, like I said, we're going to use this thread um, to splay out once we've splayed this tail. So we need at least, I think I tied in three. So I need to have at least one separate. So I'll grab <clears throat> one. So I have it separated. So I'm going to put my thread in between it. So right now, if I were to turn this over, you can see, oh, it's so hard to see those tails. But as I pull this thread this direction, I'm going to put a wrap over top of it so it stays on the hook shank. And then as I pull tension, it splays those more. You see how it splays that tail? If I pull on it, it splays, pull on it, it splays. We want to find kind of a middle ground and how, how much it's splayed. Because if you look at these spinners when they're on the, uh, on the water, they are quite splayed. So <clears throat> find a distance that you feel comfortable with of them being splayed. And then I'm gonna take some heavier, tighter thread wraps over that tag to make sure that that's not gonna move. And then I can trim it out. And that's gonna leave me with a nice splayed tail, like so. If I could get a piece of white paper behind that you could see a little better, but it's splayed that mayfly tail, okay? Now, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back up to the front. I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of room about an eye length behind the hook eye is where I'm gonna leave my thread. And now I'm gonna go over to this material here which is our like this one is specifically like a para post uh, wing material um, you could use Zelon or Antron those are really popular as well anything that floats really well because this is pretty much the only part of the fly that's keeping it on top of the water um, this is gonna be our wing okay so I'm not gonna use all of this I'm gonna take just a little bit off it's a little bit broad I like to kind of turn and spin it together all right Ken's getting a back rub on his float trip this year because he's complimented my tunes again oh come on Ken you don't need that back rub from Tim I'll bring Tim and he'll rub your back <laughs> uh, okay so what I'm gonna do here guys I'm gonna tie this in almost like it was dumbbell eyes okay so I'm gonna lay it across my hook shank so laying it like so okay and then I'm gonna take some thread wraps um, diagonally across each side and this is going to be our wing and when these spinners die their wings lay flat on the water so on a mayfly they kind of look like a sailboat when they're in their mature stage because their wings are standing straight up and then <clears throat> when they die they actually look a lot different because those lay perfectly flat. flat super flat translucent slay look at this greg body. childers got his shirt today oh uh, what's up greg? and if that's not gorgeous oh, i don't know awesome. what is uh, that's awesome i think he's ordered some more of them too because i'm supposed to set him something with it too so there you have it guys that's how I tied in that wing now now that I have it placed where I want it to be okay all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and do some figure eights okay I really want to brace these wings so I'm gonna do some figure eights around them just as if they were a set of dumbbell eyes I just might have to be a little bit more careful I mean you have to hold the wing as I go around them but this is the one part we really don't want to move we don't want it to move around the hook shank itself um, or to lose any of that material. So once I've got that pretty good and where I like where it is, you could even put a dab of UV resin on that or something like that, and that's gonna hold it from moving. But I'm pretty confident that's not going anywhere, okay? 
Now, <clears throat> while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim this because it, it does get a little annoying when they're in the way. So I'm gonna imagine cutting a wing. So these wings over exaggerate them, make them long because those wings stand so perfectly tall um, up like a sailboat. So when you just imagine that they splay out, they go this way and they lay flat on the water, they just create a nice flat surface. So I want it to be basically the same length as if I went from the hook eye to the back bend of the hook. Okay, so start there, start long because long is better because you can trim a little more off if you need to. Okay, just pause for a sec. And just throw, turn the fly so we can yep. just see. So as people are coming at it, just kind of hold it there. Just just, just in case, Sean and, Sean and the gang yeah, yeah. need to catch so it, up so they can kind of looks, see where they're at. It looks long, I, I get that guys, um, but it, it needs to be uh, fairly long. Those wings are actually quite long in comparison to their body. And when you have it here, you can even go in and trim a little bit more of a shape into it if you want, like round, try to round out the edges and may make it look a little more, a little more realistic like a wing. Not a necessary step really, because I don't think they really care that much, but you always can go in and do some little details if you like. And that kind uh, of Chaz said, how big do you make the thorax? So the thorax itself, uh, Chaz, we're actually gonna build that up with the next material, um, but the thorax is gonna sit basically right between the wings. Um, and if you're doing a, a dubbing thorax, then you would dub it on top, maybe twice the size of the body. Um, but the, the material we're going to use, we're going to wrap it up and then we're going to figure right over top of the wings and that's going to build up the bulk of the thorax. So yeah, good question. So cool, cool, <coughs> cool, cool, cool. So, <coughs> so let's get this back here. What I'm going to do is head on over to this material here. Okay. So this is going to be our rusty spinner, uh, body. So what it is, is it's like a yarn material. And if you kind of untwist it, you can see there's like three or four, four fibers, I think, in here. So I want to grab at least two of them out. So if I grab this and split it, one moment. So i splitting the fibers apart and I pull on them. I can strip them down. I basically want to be left with two like this. Okay. Now <clears throat> I'm going to work my thread back. Just be good and careful that you don't trap any of that wing material. I'm gonna bring my wing back right to where I left that tail material and do your best to keep the wing out of it. That's kind of the hardest part of this fly, guys, is just keeping that wing from being caught up in your thread wraps. I'm gonna lay down <coughs> uh, that body material. I'm gonna secure it right where I left my tail fibers and I'm gonna work it forward a little bit. I can trim out that butts if I made them a little too long. So I'll just go in there and trim out that one because it's kind of in the way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start wrapping this forward. So I need to take my thread first off and get that up by my eye. And I'm going to do a little half hitch, save my work. If you're working on the Norvice especially, this is a great thing to do because you can set, set it out of the way on your cradle. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to start doing some even wraps forward. I'm trying to keep that wing out of it the best that I can. Start wrapping forward. This is going to be our body. Moving forward, moving forward. And right when I get to the back of the wings, so it can help to kind of moisten your fingers and spin the wing. It's gonna keep all the materials together while you're working around the wings, and then when it dries, it'll fluff back out. So once I get to right behind the wing, what I'm gonna do is I'll flip this over as you can see. I'm gonna cross over in between. Okay, so I crossed over one way. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna cross over the other way. And I'm going to do that a couple times to build up that thorax. Because I want that thorax to be a little bulkier than the rest of the fly. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'll turn it back up vertical. I'm going to finish by doing a wrap in front of the wings. I'm going to bring my thread back in. And I'm going to tie it off like that once I get that tied in there <clears throat> take a couple more thread wraps and I can trim out that butt so I know that there's nothing there just like so and now once that starts to dry out again that wings gonna splay out a bit you can see it makes that nice wide profile wing again okay um, and pretty much at this point guys we're just about there I'm just gonna go in with my half hitch tool because I like using this on the smaller flies a couple times around it or you can whip finish it bring the thread off 
It's and interesting though, like when you put that tool in there, it shows how small the fly actually yeah. is. This is a very small tool. Like if you look at the tool in comparison to my finger, let's say, that's how small the tool is. And then this is how small the fly is. So it's super tiny fly. This is what it looks like. I got that nice splayed tail. Okay, you can see it's splayed there. These wings sticking out. <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful pattern. So, so simple. You can tie it in very small sizes without much difficulty. And uh, this one, guys, I promise you, keep it in your box. And I'm kind of like Dana. The only colors I've ever really had it in is this rusty. I mean, they, there's a reason that the rusty is so popular. Um, I do sometimes tie them in a little bit lighter tan color. Um, but that's about it. That's where we leave it. We don't need much different than that. And I guarantee you that if you are lucky enough to catch a spinner fall or you're fishing some little bit slower water and you're seeing some of these in the water and fish are picking them off, put one on. And I bet you, you will find some Or success. if you're like, hey, what are they eating? Yeah. Just like the story I told last week. You know, does anybody remember? <laughs> You guys even care know. about me, or is it all about Tim and his ties? It's not about me. I promise you that. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, back all to right, you guys. Right. That's the PFD personal flotation device, Rusty Spinner. And tied simply, have you ever used the yarn? Because yeah. you can also dub it. But, uh, wow, that makes it a lot easier. And I think the idea here is to get these flies tied quick and effective and easy yeah agreed so yeah. that's why that works so well mark asked a good question he said i've never fished a spinner fly do you guys treat it like a dry fly and use floating um yes i do i i put floating on, on this fly on the wings the wings are the that's why they call it the pfd on this one because that's you can tie it with like wally wings or different materials that don't float as well but this is supposed to keep it up in the film and sometimes that body would hang under the surface film um, if you also dub the, uh, <coughs> sorry, dub. If you also use floating on the dubbed body, it will keep it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, most of the time, it's just the wings. The super like a Trico spinner fall. Super hard to fish, super hard to see. But I'm gonna teach you guys a trick tonight, because we're tying two flies that you should keep uh, together. Because, and uh, I do this a lot with clients that can't see well, which is pretty uh, much yes. everyone. Most so people, yeah. You can take both. You have a simple Chernobyl already tied. I do. So you could take the simple Chernobyl. Okay, so that's the first fly off of your leader. And then from the eye of that hook, you can tie about 11 to 13 inches. And you could tie a rusty spinner. Why would you do that? Because it's really hard to see the rusty spinner, okay? And if your Chernobyl is supposed to emulate a bug, well, bugs live on water, or they, they don't live on water, but they go to water. And so why did the music stop? <laughs> You're doing so good. So, so good. <laughs> you can do it. Oh, I did it. There you okay, go. Okay, so... It's considered a cider fly. It's like an indicator fly. It's like mm -hmm. an indicator and a bobber. You can't see your nymphs, but you see the bobber move. And so um, at least you can have that that big foam fly, which we're going to tie right away. And then you're going to have your PFD rusty spinner over here. And it shouldn't disturb anything. And if you feel like it's too calm of water or it's going to disturb something, then tie on a little smaller fly like a hackle beetle, which we're going to tie uh next week or two weeks or like a foam cricket oh foam yeah no i thought we had a beetle or like too. a cinnamon flying ant that we're going to tie next oh, yeah, week that is, yeah. so uh you can use these foam flies as your indicator flies and uh, <coughs> uh that's a tactic we use in guiding because the clients do like to see they don't like just to be told set the hook uh, they like to kind of watch watch go down so we can give them the idea of an indicator fly and they can have the little tiny dry fly okay and so now what that even does is it helps them it illustrates the zone at to which the circumference is like 11 inches to where their other fly should be so when they see that it's like okay there's that foam fly oh i see it mm -hmm. and now uh, otherwise i've had people like casting small flies 
Uh, they're staring up here. Their fly is behind them. And <laughs> it's true. It happens. They're, you're like set, and they haven't. You can tell they don't know where they're looking for a fish. Yeah. At all. So, and I mean, honestly, why do we dry fly fish to see, see the, the take? Tank. Yeah. So, uh, it works. Pick your size of foam, uh, and you'd be surprised sometimes. <laughs> your foam might actually get eaten yeah two possible eating two possible eating so plus. it's like hopper dropper except they're not nymphing your hopper dry fly right cool hopefully that tip resonates and i believe yeah. john miller is in COVID isolation and he's tied every single quick tie <laughs> uh, we appreciate Perfect. the comments yeah i think that was him yeah okay he's waiting to hear some cure now they're making fun of my playlist <laughs> now i gotta pick <laughs> things up and i gotta go over here uh, trauma harishi asked uh, a question about floating um, <clears throat> what my, our recommendation, we went over this a couple episodes ago, um, pre-treatment and pre-treatment meaning I stick my fly in this one. I dry it off in the air. This guy here is amazing. It is called fly agra. If you, if you've never heard of this, um, I urge you to give it a try. This will keep your fly up and it actually is a warning on here about keeping your fly up too long. Maybe consult your local fly shop. Um, but this stuff is amazing. Give it a try. Um, it's better than just about every other floatant. Well, I, in my opinion, it is better than all other floatants as a pre-treatment and lots of time is all you need. Um, as a backup, if I've used that and my fly is, I fished it long enough or caught enough fish that it's starting to sink, um, I go over to this guy here. This is one of my favorites. Uh, Dana put me onto this one. This is called Loxa by Loon and it is good for CDC, which is kind of the reason we also use it. We fish some CDC flies a lot on the bow. And um, so we go to this Loxa next and I would, just, for instance, on this fly, I probably wouldn't pre-treat it. I would go straight to the Loxa just on the wings and yeah, um, yeah. it would just, I guarantee you, you'd be super happy with how well it stays up. So yeah, hope that totally. answers your question. Speaking of fly treatment, I did buy some Loxa. What was the tip on using that again? So that, so, Loxa is just a floating. So uh, just basically put some on your fingers, put some on your fly, and it's not like a gel. Yeah, it doesn't get, well, it gets it's a little kind of, yeah, in the cold. cold. Gel, but like you just kind of rub it into your fly a bit. It's good for wings. But um, it's not really a gel. There's some right there. Yeah. <clears throat> put it it's on your fingers. Really. Tell me what it's like. It's very liquidy. Yeah, it's definitely more liquidy than a gel. See? Yeah. Liquid Loxa. <clears throat> the pre-treatment is the fly agra, which uh, the intention was to tie a fly. So like as Tim would tie the Chernobyl, he would pre-treat it right now with the fly agra and then put it in his fly box and then use floatant. Uh, yeah. But I suggest just using it as, yeah. uh, as that, mm -hmm. as yeah, that exactly. good stuff called... <clears throat> Is the good right. stuff. So let's head over to the big camp. Let's see what happens next when we oh boy. take the first one away. Oh, looks oh. like those Mars bars are getting cutting up. Getting yeah. cut up. Getting chopped. They're chopped cutting up. up. They're getting chopped up. We don't know what's coming next, but Brent does, and the folks at Tracks Pub will know because they I'll be already enjoying them. Definitely got into them. <laughs> so if you guys haven't already downloaded a bingo card, download the bingo card. Yep. Got mine. As we talked about before, it is Green Shirt Day. It is super important. Uh, it is about raising awareness for organ donation. Have you signed your donor card? Uh, are you an organ donor? And um, because it's very special and it's it's uh, something near and dear to my heart, and I hope I don't get in trouble for sharing this, uh, but I kind of found this video that TSN, credit all credit to you, TSN, uh, your card is still good from last week, and uh, but I I want to show this video uh, about Logan Boulay, uh who has had the Logan Boulay effect on uh, I know especially in Canada, uh, getting people to sign up for uh, organ donation. So something uh, that we're passionate about and something that we're really uh, gonna drive home here tonight. So let's watch this couple minute video uh, on Logan, and we'll be right back. Oof. Yeah. Um, Jonathan Westcott said Toby was a rugby mentor in Lethbridge. Toby's Logan's dad. Uh, he's an amazing man and community gentleman, and that's a fact. And he's, um, yeah, me and him have had some good conversations over the past couple months, and uh, yeah, we're 
we're just pumped to be able to uh, help share the story. Um, like Troy Tracy just said, I'll be signing my card for sure. And so uh, yeah. if it affects one person, uh, Logan's winning. And so that's what it's about, folks. It's about leaving a legacy. Um, and that's pretty cool. So that is a little more of the story for those who didn't know. Um, if you if you don't know the story, which I think is probably pretty rare, uh, given that it kind of made like uh, international headlines, uh, you mm-hmm. can check it out. Probably YouTube. There's a lot of videos out about uh, Humboldt Broncos. Um, yeah, so we keep the story alive and we keep sharing. And on this day, on Green Shirt Day, uh, we keep that the organ donation message going. So, um, all right. What's next? <laughs> how to how to switch gears? That's a hard segue. Yeah. Yeah, but I know uh, I don't know if Toby's watching. Toby, if you're here, uh, we love you and uh, big hugs out to the whole Boulay family yeah 100 and uh let's say yeah. thanks to our sponsors and so we can come right back time we spend in front of our vices don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut All right, all right, all right. So, uh, let's play some bingo. Let's give yeah. away some prizes, let's do it. and then let's crush your dreams with the doors of doom. <laughs> uh, yes, um, we can do that too. Bingo! Get your bingo. bingo cards right there. It's your last chance to get your bingo cards because uh, we're about to play bingo. Flying go Watermaster rafts. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, that's not the screen we want to see. Neither is that one, because that one will show you that I got a bingo (laughs) card, and I'm going to be playing that separately. All right, so folks, we're looking for one line. One line. One line. One line. This is... One line. Do you think I'm going to win? One line. One line. Okay, so you need top, the bottom, the middle, the bottom, the whatever, the cross, diagonal. Whatever it is. So uh, the, the thing here, guys, is the first one to get a line. What we need to, you to do is it's point. important that you say which call it came on, whether it's call one, two, three, four, five, six, six. And you also uh, need to give us the little ID number that's in the top portion of your card, okay? Um, those two things are very important. Um, and it is possible that there is going to be a tie, being that it's a simple one to get in on. And if that is the case, don't worry. We have a tiebreaker that will uh, give us the winner. So we don't choose it. We'll show you how we do it. So yes. keep following along. Get the first four up there. Um, start checking them off your card. And if you get your bingo, let us know. So it's like Tim said, bingo, call for ID 001, whatever, whatever it is. Yep. That's how you make the show go smooth. I will never, ever again call <laughs> Dude, the, the whatever blackout. that disaster <laughs> debacle. That was not. I was. Good. All right. So next call is Silent Bob, a streamer we tied on episode one. The Clink Hammer, the Simple Scud, the Rough Water Caddis, and the Bruin Raft, which is one of Watermaster's rafts, as they yeah. sponsored the Watermaster Fly Ingo. So we just pause. Because Eric Augustin has got bingo. Already? Eric, you know the rules. It's bingo call 5001. Whatever. Jeez. You can't just say bingo, Eric. Oh, man. He got, I only got Mad, three. Mad Butcher. I only got three so far. You are playing. <laughs> I told you I was playing tonight. <coughs> I'm winning. 
Apparently I'm gonna not. play Silent uh, Bob eighty four. This is crazy. That's like who's Dylan Bob? Bob Dylan. <laughs> oh, where's yeah. your oh. wizard face? Well, that comes to the doors of doom, oh, which man. I've got to figure out. So, what call? What number was he? He said he 84. was eighty four. That's crazy. I forgot to start out. I did not do well. There he is. There he is. He is basically. That's all I got. Bo Wambo. On the first boom, just like that. Eric is well, excited, but no, first, <sighs> Tim's gonna tell you a joke. Ugh, jokes. Because I forgot to start up the wizard face. Oh, the wizard face. Well, this is um, I, as we he does this to me every week, and he knows I don't tell jokes. So either we find one from the crowd, or we talk about something else. But let's just talk about this first off. I got to play along today. Look how terrible that was. I only got three, and none of them were uh, in any, any type of line. So that sucks. Yeah, that was possibly the fastest bingo I have ever seen done in five calls. Um, and now we get to send him over to the Doors of Doom. And if you're curious as to what the Doors of Doom are and you're new here, you're going to find out shortly. That, discredit. Um, oh, I'm not discrediting anything. The master and creator is sitting next oh. to me. And just remember, uh, win or lose, you can either praise him or be angry with him. Or haze him. Praise him or praise haze him. him. <laughs> praise or haze him. I'm really, uh, yes. I'm really hoping my... Your, uh, your wizard costume is going to come into play? Yeah. Yes. Um, so we got a, a joke here. So uh, let's find out. Why do ducks have feathers? So uh, um, Mr. Lane duck. Lee <laughs> is going to let us know. So why... Oh, and why do fish sleep? Or where do where? they sleep? The <sighs> riverbed. The riverbed. Uh, the, he's a dad for sure. That's, oh, that's Pam. Oh, it is Pam. Pan. So let's see if I can go preview let's see. mode. Let's see. I want to hear the, the punchline to his uh. joke. Doug's joke. Why do birds have feathers? Well, tell us. Let us know. Apparently the wizard face isn't going to work oh, tonight, Oh, come folks. on. Oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, well. I, I can only you, do because I, I had so much going on, I forgot <laughs> to do it, and I said... <laughs> Failure is going to feel just as good for them, no matter what. Doors oh, of doom. Yeah. Maybe oh, I could put on the rally cap. So why do birds have feathers? I don't it know. to cover I'm their butt quacks. completely ignoring <laughs> all <laughs> the butt, the butt quacks. quacks. I said I'm ignoring all uh, of your jokes. Okay, sorry. And now I need oh, to know man. for a fact. Well, you know what Mr. you need to do. Augustin. Uh, Mr. Eric, let us know. Pick what your you number pick? And, and pick it quick. Live with your decision. the destruction Ugh. is going to happen whether you like it or not. You could not. 19 and 20 got into a fight. Door number two. <laughs> well, oh, Mr. Eric. That's the worst number, I think. He picked door number two. Well, let's see what happens. Are we adding prizes so to I, next week? What I would like to do, Eric, is say... I wish I wasn't you, because <laughs> we're going to choose door number two. Let's Eric see. chose door number two. Mike said it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Better not be one. All right. Well, let's see what's behind one, since Eric's so Ugh. faint-heartedly not wanting it to be one. Here's what's okay. on behind What's door number one? one. If you're a Trax Pub, put your hands together oh, for no. Eric Augustin and door number one. No, he man. didn't get it. He wasn't the uh, winner. He's the loser. Eric. Eric's the loser. Eric. Well, let's see what's behind oh, door number man. two. The door that Eric so confidently picked. Oh, absolutely oh, nothing. Absolutely, absolutely. Nothing. Well, nothing. And just to prove that the stickers <sighs> exist, there they are, folks. Eric's you bum. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Eric, uh, that is how the cookie crumbles when you is, play this game. That so. is how it crumbles, Eric. Well, everybody, we those prizes you. will head on to next week, and next maybe week, and you'll win them with some prizes. Double the prizes next week. <laughs> the doors of doom oh. reigns victorious. Oh, man. And, but to put us in a good spirit, we're going to head over here to the baking cam. We're going to check out. Oh, we oh, got we're stirring up stuff. Melted. <laughs> stirring up stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't uh, have been more generic. Oh, look stirring at that. Stirring up stuff. <coughs> this Doors is of doom. Such an evil uh, thing. Welcome to the club. See, there is a group for you, Eric. Yeah, we found you. Just your glad people. to win. 
Yes. You thought the tight new grip was Thursday Night Live, but it's actually the grieving (laughs) (laughs) the grieving group of the Doors of Doom. Grieving Doomers. The (laughs) The Grieving Doomers. It sounds like a band. It is. Speaking of bands, is Art Corey in the house? Well, it looks like the Mars bars are getting melted. Melted in. I like Jealous it. Jealous of a stash. That's Cam. This is Cam. And that's the baking Cam. So, well, let's get into it. Let's get going on the foam. The foam. Oh, look at that. It's already done. Foam. We're done. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> and for Sean Ellison up at Grand Prairie, actually, you know what we should do? What we should do is anybody who has been given the guest code, patch us in. Yeah. And let's uh, let's check out some interviews. Yeah, we can Let's do that. check out the folks. Definitely do that. Uh, let's check out the good folks, the good people. Sean, if you're there. Uh, Cole, you've got the link. Who's ever got the link? I'm waiting for you to ring. This is what we're about to tie. Ring-a-ding-ding. Is the symbol Chernobyl. Yes. Go ahead and prepare that thread we talked about earlier, which is going to be, I'm going to do it in black. I'm going to do a black UTC 140. You want something a little thicker so it does not cut through your foam because we're going to be pretty much tying foam, and that's about it. Glenn said the dooms, the dooms, what did I call them? (laughs) The the doom gloomers or... Oh, no, the grieving oh, doomers. The gre- <laughs> Gotta come up the with doom, that. the doom <laughs> grievers. <make> <laughs> the grieving doomers. The grieving have, doomers. Ben said we got shirts and Ativan prescriptions. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Looks like we got somebody here. We're gonna head over here. Uh, we're gonna sign the tracks pub guest oh, let's to see number who it is. one, and then we're gonna pop over and go vertical. Oh, but what we're gonna here. do <laughs> is turn them down because there's gonna be echoes oh. in the echo chamber. Well, there's Mr. Struthers, Mr. Fisher, Ben, there's um, the girlfriend of Cole, <laughs> the girl fiance. Oh, yes, there's the party people. So that's track. Trucks Pub folks wearing the green shirts. Nice. Everybody's got their green shirts on. Awesome. That's great. We appreciate it, Tracks Pub. And thanks for everybody tuning in. And what we're going to do is head back over here. We're going to hang up on Cole and we're going to see if Sean from Grand Prairie is in there. Uh, send me the link. I sent you the link. It may or may not uh, be sent. Oh, I sent it to you. Meanwhile, while he's working on that, guys. Apparently, I never sent the link. Let's uh, work on getting that kit open. Again, be careful. There is some, well, not really small stuff in this one, but there is a few more materials. We got three colors of foam. We got some rubber legs and a hook. Okay, so be careful, but go ahead and open up that kit. It's going to look something like this. Uh, great thing about these kits, guys, is you already get a fly um, tied up in there. So in case everything else fails, you've, uh, you've already got one in there. So you can go fishing. So that's kind of a nice bonus for you guys. <clears throat> and then hopefully have enough material to tie this a couple times. So I'm going to go ahead and start prepping this. We're going to see if we can get uh, Mr. Allison in the house. We're waiting on him. He did not have the link, but now he does. Now he does. Where did I sent it to him already. Oh, he must not think so. I just sent it to him. Ah. And I said no. And then I said... And then I said it's... And then he said never mind. And then he said he wants in. And then he said he here. <laughs> and Sean... Well, oh. if you come in, you come in. All right. Well, let's. Uh, oh wait, he, oh, wait. Oh, I see him. I see him. I see him. There he is. Ring ding dingin. Ring a ding ding. Okay, hold tight. He might also be on this whole thing of. I just have to put him here and sign him onto guest one. Look at oh, all the fun there folks in Grand Prairie. Hey guys. We're just gonna mute them because they're gonna get massive feedback. <laughs> What is up? Sean said he had a lot of young, beautiful people at Fly Tying Club that's tonight. That's what he and said. And that appears to be true. That appears to be true. So look, at, look at us on the big screen. There we are. <laughs> that's awesome. Great to see you all. Thanks for What's coming. What's happening? Everybody in. give us a thumbs up. I, I don't know what I, you're saying. <laughs> I read, I read lips once. <laughs> and, well, and that's it. And Sean's apparently he hung gone. up on you. All right. And that's Sean's shy, and that's all right. Well, that's all right. Oh, oh there no, it is. there it is. We get to see <laughs> Sean's beautiful face. <laughs> representing the shirt, uh, too. Representing Fly Fishing Bover Outfitters and the sun shirt that Sean got last year. Nice. And uh, that's because it's so epic. Oh, uh, yes, it is that. <laughs> uh, 
We can't we can't listen, we can't hear you unless you step outside. If you want to step outside, nope, that is gone. There that's, you go. That peace out. See you later. See you later. It's like Dylan. Yeah. And gone. <laughs> All right. Well, it was great to see you guys up there. Thanks for tuning in and uh, uh, following along. That's awesome. Yeah. So what I need to do is absolutely change, change. my what are you gonna music. Change? Yes, I do. Before I go and take a potty break. All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get working on here. If you want to, excuse right. me, switch me over. You get this, Tim. I'll switch you over. Sean and the good people of Grand Prairie, Colin and the good people in Olds, Alberta, Canada. Oh, yeah. If you'd like to set up a satellite pub, let us know. All you got to do is press play yep. and it's on. Super easy. <clears throat> All right, guys. Let's get to work on this simple Chernobyl. Simple, simple Chernobyl. This is not going to take us super long to get through. It's a very simple tie. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start my thread just behind the eye. Uh, I saw a comment up here from uh, Mr. Cameron. He asked me, so explain again how you keep the foam from spinning around the hook shank. Well, what I'm doing right now is actually helping with that. Okay, so it's it's really important uh, that you lay down a little bit of a thread base because it gives that foam something to grip onto and it assists in keeping it from spinning. Now, there's always going to be the potential that it spins, but uh, working with the thread tension is going to make a big difference on whether it actually does or not, which we're going to focus on as we go through this pattern. Okay, so what you're going to see is you have uh, two different colors of foam here. We're going to tie the main body of these two, and we're going to use some of the orange foam as cider material. Okay, and then all we have besides that is some rubber legs. Uh, we're just using some black rubber legs. Uh, you got a couple strands there. Peel them apart. We're good to go on those. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in this uh, blonde or tan colored foam. But what I need to do first is I need to trim it so that it's a hook gap in length. So you can see this is a little bit long or a little bit wide, sorry. And actually, to be honest, I like tying it in, or sorry, trimming it a little bit thinner than even a hook shank, or sorry, hook gap and width, because I wanna see more of this underneath the black foam. And you're gonna see when I tie this in what I mean by that. So I'm gonna trim this down, this whole piece, just so I have it all kind of the same width. And that's gonna slide just inside that, which I like, it's a little bit narrow. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna square it off. Okay, so it's squared. Now, I'm going to start by tying this one in right at the back here. I'm going to leave about a hook gap. So imagine from the shank to the hook point like there. I'm going to leave that much hanging off the back of the fly. So I'm going to leave that back there. I'm going to go ahead and take my first thread wrap. And I'm going to take another second one right after it and then kind of pinch down. So, And then that's where I'm going to get my first chance to kind of keep this where I want it on the, on the hook shank. And that's just me putting some thread wraps in tension holding it, pulling down. So it's important that I hold it when I pull down. If I didn't, when I held it, it would spin. Or if I didn't hold it, it would spin when I pulled down. And that's not what I wanted to do. So top looks like that so far, bottom looks like that. Okay, now we're gonna go over to our black foam. And now I need to do the same thing, but this time I'm gonna measure it so it's truly a hook gap and width. Okay, and this one is perfect. This one is already pretty much trimmed to it. I'm just gonna trim off the edge of this foam so it's kind of squared up and then the width is really good. So go ahead and trim your foam uh, so it is the proper thickness. And then this one is gonna go on top. So again, I'm gonna square off the back end so it's nice and even, like so. <clears throat> and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna lay this one Oh, right. look who graced us with their presence. Oh, Mr. Uh, Sven Diesel's in the Spenson. house. Spenson. What's up, my brother? I'm going to lay that right on top of that black foam, even uh, sorry, right on the tan foam, and I want the black and the tan to be even, okay? So then I'm gonna take my first thread wrap here. Again, pull down a bit, take a second, third, fourth, and then pull tight. And I'm gonna be left with something that looks like this, okay? They're stacked on top of each other, but I can kind of see that black out around the tan, and it'll be exemplified more and more as I move down the pattern. Um, but first, we have to leave some legs back here. So I'm gonna grab that strand, that, that long strand I had, and I'm gonna fold it in half, match up the tips like so. Pull down until I find the loop. Trim the loop. Okay. Now I'm gonna lay this evenly dispersed, half and half, on the top of the pattern here. Take another thread wrap. So this time I wanna do one, two. Let the weight of the bobbin pull down and hold those in place. Now I can still move them around. So I'm gonna grab the, the two that are on the near side to me. And I'm gonna pull them around to that side of the fly. I'm gonna grab these two. And I'm gonna pull them around to this side of the fly. And you can kind of nestle them Sometimes you kind of got them to stick right between the two foam pieces 
and then they'll they'll splay out perfect like so okay so that's where i'm gonna lay those two i'm gonna leave them there next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tie in some cider foam so we're gonna tie in the cider foam twice once at the back once at the front um, and same thing with the legs front and back um, and then basically we're just going to make some segmentation in that under foam and the tan and leave the, the black uh, just evenly laid as is out over the top. So <clears throat> the cider foam doesn't have to be super wide. I do need it to be narrower than uh, the actual piece of black foam. Otherwise it'll hang out over the sides and the fish might have an opportunity to see it. So all you can see is I'm just cutting a little rectangle. The longer you cut it, the higher it's going to stick up from the pattern and that can be good or bad. Uh, depending on what you want. So I'm gonna lay that back even with the back of the pattern on top of the black foam. Take a thread wrap and if those legs want to move around on me I can always just grab them and bring them back to make sure they're where they want to be. Okay so that's what I've done here and <clears throat> it's a little bit long and it didn't splay up super well for me so I'm just gonna go ahead and trim that back a little bit. I like that, like that. Tim has a ride home tonight, folks, just in case uh, you wanted to do something dangerous. I wouldn't think they need to do that. <laughs> okay, so guys, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this black foam back and I'm going to start segmenting this pattern. I want to start with a little bit bigger segmentations and work down to smaller. So I'm going to land... Tim, quick question. Some, yes? Who won Flying Go tonight? Who won it, Eric? Eric Nobody. Oh. <laughs> That's all I wanted to know. I That's failed. it. I failed. <laughs> You're such a jerk. I'm going to wrap this forward up the thread, or sorry, up the hook shank a little bit. And then I'm going to grab that foam, pull down. That's my first segmentation. Okay. So now if I look on the underside, you see I got a little segmentation. We're going to do somewhere between three and four of those. So I'm going to wrap forward again, pull it down, do another one. Trying to keep them fairly even in size, if not, maybe a little smaller each one, but same same in size is fine. Wrap my thread forward again. Gonna do a third one. Again, you can see how I'm using my fingers to keep that foam right on top of the hook shank. So at this point, this is what we got, we're working with. We can see those beautiful segmentations. And now this guy is, is really simulating, for the most part, a stonefly. Could be a hopper as well, but one of the two. Could just be a really big ant why do they call it a chernobyl ant pattern that fascinates me if you guys know the answer let me know also want to know who won flying go tonight yeah well apparently nobody did <laughs> it's what i've heard okay ask so eric he knows he does know <laughs> <laughs> uh now i'm gonna bring it down to about a uh uh, hook eye length back so if I imagine that as being a measuring point I'm just gonna leave it back a little bit from that eye I'm gonna pull it down do my last segmentation which is gonna be my fourth segmentation pull it down do a couple thread wraps to secure you it. zap a gap your foam I don't on this specific pattern when you're tying in two pieces of foam and it's a lot less likely to spin on you and if you did it kind of the way that I've been doing it where you wrap your thread up then go back over it really doesn't move much on you but it's not a bad idea. You can try it for sure. Okay, now I'm going to take this black foam, lay it down on top of all that tan foam, and I'm going to do thread wraps right at that same last tie-in point for the segmentation. One, two, three, four. Pull down again, make sure it's good and tight. And now this is what I have on the underside. Now you see why I left the tan a little bit thinner um, than the black because you get to see that black body over top of the tan and it looks like a tan segmentation on the underside okay um, now that we're to this point we're just going to repeat what we did in the back we need to get our legs in and then we need to get our cider foam in so again I'm going to fold my legs over get them even like so I'm going to cut down there evenly spaced half and half on either side go one wrap two wrap let the weight of the bobbin Hold them in place. I can pull and even them out. Pull one to the near side, one to the far side. Make sure they're in place and splayed out nicely. <clears throat> Sometimes you kind of got to work with the legs a little bit to get them where you want them to be. And then once they are where you want, just take a few extra thread wraps, really kind of sink it in. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab another piece of that cider foam. Okay, didn't do much with it, just a little, little rectangle. Going to trim it like so. Okay, lay it right, kind of centered on that same tie-in point. Pull down nice and tight. That should take that foam and stand it up for you. So now we have these nice little areas of uh, cider foam that we're gonna be able to see. And then I'm gonna pull back everything. Okay, I'm gonna pull all this back, 
and take some thread wraps just by the eye there, okay? You can either whip finish or grab that uh, half, half, half inch tool, whatever it is you like to use to finish off your fly. Go ahead, finish it off. You can add some resin if you need to. We got a little bit of trimming to do and then we're done. So I'm gonna take that thread, get that out of the way. Now, as far as the foam length in the front here, I like to leave about the same distance or maybe a little less than I did in the back uh, in the front. So I'm just gonna lay my scissors against the hook eye I'm gonna come out just slightly, make sure I'm not gonna cut my legs and trim that off. So it's gonna look something like that. And then I like to come in here and just round off the corners of the foam. Doesn't have to be anything drastic. Just round it off a little bit like so, okay? And then the legs. So legs, I want them to be, I don't know, I like my legs long, but I'll take a little bit of lace and I don't pull the legs down and stretch them because I want them to be um, however they're tied in is kind of the way they're gonna naturally lay so I'm gonna leave them like that so you can see although this guy here is lo way longer than the other ones the way it's naturally wanting to sit is there um, if this was out here I would trim it a bit but because it likes to lay back there I'm gonna leave it there I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom try to get them kind of close to uh, similar length as the other ones and there we have it guys that is our simple Chernobyl uh, you can tell it's super super sexy little fly um, time in a variety of colors, although this is my go-to color. I really the like go this one. go-to. I like this for a little stone fly color. Um, and although it's not as easy to see as the chubby Chernobyl, if you put in that cider foam, it will make your life a lot easier. Um, yeah. Feed Where's this, feed Rosina? This well, I truly don't think dry flies need any, but Mike had a good question. You used Sally Hansen's a lot last year. Yeah. Why not this year? Yeah, that's a good question, Mike. Because <laughs> um, hardened? Yeah. <laughs> Well, that bottle is completely hard. Um, no, to be honest, I, I, in my personal tying, I use it all the time. Um, but to be honest, the, uh, the, this, the solar res that I use here, this bone dry, it's pretty much replaced all resin for me. Like I, well, or, or glue or glue. I can't think yeah. of a time that I really don't like to use this because it's as thin as Sally Hansen's. It soaks into things and then I can cure it. So it instantly Zap dries. It. So I don't, I don't know. Um, that's a good question. I kind of go through these ebbs and flows of what I like in tying, and sometimes it's for resin. It's you know I do like to go back to Sally Hansen's. I would yeah. say with actual dry flies, like let's say like the one we tied earlier, the the, the rusty spinner, I would I would likely use um, Sally Hansen's on that or any other actual dry fly. In my mind, for some reason, I think this adds weight. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. That's just a thing in my or, head. Or more like a density of like sinking. Yeah, like, I guess. Yeah, you just yeah. So it's Cause, it's cause really floating won't saturate that. No, and therefore it becomes uh, what we call dense. Oh, look at this. Sven says, check out the new Bone Dry Ultra. It penetrates beyond what the UV light sees. Uh, that's awesome. I did not. That's I've deep. never heard of it. That is deep. I'll have to see if I can get my. Maybe it's an American thing. One of those things we can't get. Could be. We'll see. I'll look but it. now that we got you guys' attention, Ooh, look at this. I figured out the shirts. <laughs> how, to, how to put the shirts up? I was over there working real hard. You were working hard. You, uh, I was, yeah, here we are. Anyways, Tim wants the different mic. I'll give Tim what Tim wants. Tracks Pub. Give it back. There it Tracks is. Tracks Pub, we're coming for you. Don't leave. Give us about 20 minutes or 30, 25 um yeah so these are the shirts these are the new sun shirts and the pre-order ends tomorrow so the order is going in we will not bring these shirts back yeah trust me <sighs> you're gonna want them and tomorrow by tomorrow That's is your last chance that works. So. so there's one of them love people catch fish with bury the bear on the back the next one is lpcf love people catch fish and that is our stonefly pattern logo with fly fishing board over outfitters uh that's that's, that's gonna that's be gonna one be, i love yeah I lo i'm gonna already love that one yeah and then it's it's hard to tell until you get I them know. in your hands and so i guarantee if you got all four you will <laughs> like one of them <laughs> love one of them <laughs> that was me last year i mean i don't get me wrong i love them all but the one that i thought i would love the most was the one i liked the least which is interesting yeah so, so. that's why i preface this but um so what you got to understand is these are very breathable. The logos are not uh, wham-bammed on the top. They are sublimated. OK, 
Okay, so that makes such a difference. This is screen printed. This doesn't breathe. It does not change the texture, the breathability. The back is a ventilated back, so it it super breathes. Um, yeah, gonna be awesome. That's that's the that's, top seller right now. And that's gonna be one of my faves, I think. That is the top my seller. Prediction. If you're not from Alberta, maybe that's not your thing, but it's still pretty cool because you're representing the Bow River in Alberta and the brown trout. Um, <coughs> yeah, that's awesome. For bonus points, what and how did the Bow River get stocked with brown trout? Ooh, good question. I don't know where the bonus points are going <laughs> to take you. What's it going to get you? But to the end of the show. Um, <laughs> and then, oh, that was the one I didn't want to show you, which is underneath. Ah, See you later. Is. See you later. This one, I think, is my favorite. OQP? Yeah. And so we do understand that maybe the OQP doesn't stand out quite as much. But then I thought to myself, why does a brown trout have spots? To camouflage. To blend. To blend in. To blend. So if you know, you know. It's only quality people here in the TNL fam. Um, yeah, I'm just telling you, get your shirts tonight because the order goes in tomorrow. And if you don't... Yeah, so we got some answers. Yeah. Keep me cool all summer in Florida. Um, yeah, so fishing stocking truck broke down. The guy dumped the brown said one night. So a park ranger was going to stock a lake in the Banff National Park, and his truck broke down. He didn't quite have Twitter, Tinder, Instagram, or <laughs> Facebook. He couldn't call for help. Um, so he didn't want the fish to die. Trans-Canada Highway goes right along the Bow River. And so with all these brown trout, he just decided he would put them in the Bow River. Uh, so at least that whatever, however many he had would not die. The fish made their way downstream and they flourished. And why did they flourish? Because in the Bow River, it flows right through a city of a million and a half people. Mm -hmm. But there's a water treatment plant in the city of Calgary that pumps in the nutrients, the phosphates, the sulfates, the nitrogens, which are really good for plant life. Plant life is good for what? Bugs. bugs. Lots of bugs. Okay. So it's a very nutrient-rich river, uh, which so far has withstood the test of time and anglers. And I know there's a lot of blah, 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 with people talking and, and blah, 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 but I don't get their MO. Um, yeah. Another conversation to be had. Bird eating so. fish. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, so there it is. There it is, folks. But the best part of the night is just around the corner, and oh, that yeah. is the finale of the baking cam. <laughs> what we're going to see here is as it goes in next, I, throw, I think that mixture gets yeah. wrapped in Rice Krispies. Ah, it looks like Rice Krispies, yeah. I wonder what that could look like at the end. I don't know. I think maybe... I don't know. Let's I check out. I feel like it's not on the tip of my tongue, but just maybe in my palm, like the oh, palm of my hand. So now it's getting mixed in the crispies. That is definitely Brent's arm. Oh, yes. Forearm. You can tell. Pouring the mixture over the top of that. Oh, and man. essentially, he has oh. glazed. He has glazed it. And so, uh, virtually... Tim, do you know what it looks like? Is it on the tip to, of your tongue? No, it's in the palm of my hand, I think. It's you in know, the palm like of your hand. Something like this. Oh, there it is. baby, look at that. No, nope, your nope. camera's not working. Come on, mine there's is. no way. That doesn't happen. Let's try it again. See, my, oh, sort of. There fish. it is. Look at that beauty. Well, folks, if you want the recipe, I don't we got it. the recipe. We got the goods because Mr. Struthers made for us something pretty epic tonight and if that's not a win oh. i don't know that's good yep mm. that'll put the pounds on the lbs the lbs let's give the folks some asimer the lbs and the kgs the kgs <laughs> chuck's pub how's this sound grand prairie how's this sound it's a good little treat right there. Mm. Squares are delicious. The folks at Tracks Pub know this because mm. they got the squares. Oh, that is good. Takes me back. Takes me back. Takes because my back mom made what? something like this, but not this good. Don't tell mom. Your mom made you, okay? And it's not as good <laughs> like as these. Like I said, <laughs> I'm, not that I know. good. <laughs> <laughs> Do I get any chocolate on my lips right now? 
Yum yum. Oh. All right. All right. Wins. Better take Ren home one, and you didn't. I didn't. Maybe you should save that one. Do they taste good with mojitos? We don't know. Now we do. All right. Everything tastes good. Logan Boule. Green Shirt Day. Raising awareness for uh, people to sign your organ donor cards. Um, yeah, that's what it's about today. Yeah. So make sure you guys have the conversation with your friends, your family, and all of the people that matter in your life because it's a topic that needs to be discussed and it doesn't need to be shied away from because, uh, yeah, organ and donation. The interesting thing about organ di- donation um, is a lot of times the younger people are a little bit resistant to the idea of it, but often in just pure biology, the you have younger, no chocolate on your lip. The younger you are, <laughs> um, the better your organs are. And uh, speaking from the perspective of paramedic, there has been multiple times where I have, um, you know, kept someone alive who may actually not really be viable, but we do it for that purpose because they have signed that card. And what it does is it allows you to get to another place where those organs can be harvested and saved and. Uh, it's hard save, to talk about because like, lives. like it you, seems morbid. It seems morbid, but what's not morbid is what it does for other people, and that is simply to give life. Um, what what more could you ever want in a really bad situation than to give something good? So. Like Cam said, I can't take them with me, so if someone else can use them, yeah, um, they'll probably be drunk if they get Cam. <laughs> I wouldn't go for maybe liver or kidneys from Cam, but... Uh, he has nice eyes. He's got a great heart. Yes, that's good <laughs> So Tom said, I lost my son Ian in 2015 in a car accident, and he was an organ donor like Logan. Mm. I miss him every day, but it's a comfort knowing part of him lives on. That's, <sighs> that's so awesome, Tom. It's such a hard situation, but yeah. Hmm. Amazing, he, amazing he'd signed his card. Hmm. That is Yeah, it's hard Yeah So guys, if you haven't been in our show before um, This part is selfishly our favorite Uh, We call it The wins And what does that mean? It uh, Really anything can be your win Uh, We want to bring positivity, encouragement And just light on the things that in our life um, Really just you know, make others feel good, make us feel good. It doesn't have to, I mean, you could wake up and be breathing today and that's your win. You could have <clears throat> won a Grammy today and that's your win. It doesn't really matter what it is, uh, but we would encourage you to drop it in the comments. You can see people start putting them in here. We're going to read through them because we want to encourage each other um, through the positive things that happen week to week. And some weeks don't always feel like they have a lot of positive in them. Um, but even through the worst of things, we can find something um, to be grateful for. So because I'm talking right now, I'm going to pass it over to Dana to be the first one to share a win. my most full. You have to go first. <laughs> no, I, no, 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 no. I can't. I no, want to no, share no. my win, but no, 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 no. You want to go first. No, 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 no. No, no. <laughs> my win is listening to you eat that chocolate brownie. <laughs> go to commercial. Uh, <laughs> I think we forgot one. Uh, Sorry, Colin. We oh, love you. Man. Rocky Mountain Fly Shop is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we wouldn't hmm. want to break tradition, so I'll go first. But I just finished eating, okay, so well, I can go, go, first. go first. Quite simply, I had the most absolutely prolific evening last Friday hmm. because I got to go to Mr. Chaz's and meet Mr. Nolan. And I think anytime somebody lets you in their house and makes a feast for you, it's pretty special. And uh, Chaz, that evening was beautiful. I always talk about, I talk about Chaz a lot. I say everybody needs a Chaz in their life. I think the cool part about Chaz is uh, he is who he is. Um, There's an organic nature to him, to his soul. Getting to spend more time with him. um, He opened up about a lot of stuff. And knowing that Chaz is who he is, is because Chaz chose to take a bad situation and turn it around and make himself who he is because he had a choice at seven or eight years old to say, 
I'm not going to be like that. And I think that's inspiring because a lot of us uh, go through life and we blame people for, for our actions or our bad behaviors. And um, yeah, uh, Chaz, Carolyn, Nolan. Um, the coolest part about the night for me was um, giving Nolan a hug and I told you this at the end of the night and I just snuggled him just held his face and like I'm telling you what that smile was beyond ear to ear and uh, you know with with the condition that Nolan has and sometimes you know it's hard to, to know if he's enjoying the moment or whatever uh, but the most purest form of bliss was was that it's unadulterated it's just and something about the hug I gave him just gave this smile from ear to ear and it was it was special the whole night was special um, I had a beautiful week lots of great things but Chaz thank you for uh, having Janine and I over and treating us uh, spoiling us with with your meat <laughs> <laughs> and uh, allowing us uh, to hang out with your family so Super special night. Yeah, that's awesome. <clears throat> I haven't had the pleasure to meet Nolan yet, but I look forward to that day. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the, so I guess for my win this week, yeah, it's uh, sometimes you come um, for us. I don't know, I can't speak for Dana, but for me, and I feel almost a little bit hypocritical at this point of the night because sometimes you just feel like it's a hard search uh, to find wins. And not because everything's bad, but because a lot of times, and we say this through the hardest times, you find the good. Um, and in in my last, we'll just say month, I've had a heavy, heavy month. Um, lots of stress in my life. And um, some days are hard, harder than others, but there's, uh, there's some things that have come through. And, and what I think I find the biggest win is through, you know, <clears throat> the other day, and it happened with both Dana and actually ironically with Chaz, um, when I'm struggling the most and I open up my mouth and, and, and verbalize what the hard things are going on in my life, uh, when you have a tribe, when you have a tribe like I have, these people will lift you up and you guys are part of this tribe. Um, if you reach out to these people like I have had, because I need, I'm not perfect and I'm weak, um, I can admit that. To be lifted up by the people, the men or women around you who can put a hand on your back and tell you that they love you and that things are going to be okay, um, that is so incredibly powerful. And so I look to my friends, I look to Dana and say thank you. I thank you, Chaz. Your words this week have lifted me um, through uh, some of the hell times and uh, thank you. I can't say more than that because I don't deserve what's been given to me. I've just been blessed and I'm blessed with uh, my friends and my family and all of you. So thank you for everything. Um, I know Dana feels the same, but we are incredibly blessed to have you guys part of our lives and uh, hope that you never leave us because we need every single one of you. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. And uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. But let's move on and read uh, some of your yeah. wins from this week. Um, so Adrian said, I uh, had a great visit from my wife's aunt, which forced me to have some great family time. Took the little man to the indoor place at the mall. We all went out for dinner a few times, and it was great. Awesome time. Life's got its ups and downs, but overall, I can't ask for much more. Ken, he says, I've been an organ donor for about 20 years. Um, my win is that about eight years ago, a family member needed a heart transplant, and he is still with us. Organ donation is important. Yeah. And Greg said, uh, as wins a big promotion at work, feeling blessed. And then another comment, he said, I'm one step closer to the Bow River. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that's I like cool. that. Mr. Cole, my win sitting here at tracks, <clears throat> and a little old lady came up and said, Thank you for all of us for supporting organ donations. She told us a story of how organ donator, donation impacted her and her family, and she was grateful to see a table full of everyone supporting a great cause. It wasn't a dry eye at the table. Hmm. That's awesome. Absolutely. Sven got <laughs> some free time to watch Tim tie some flies. 
and see Dana. Love this group. This was a win today for yeah. for Mr. Sven for sure. Uh, thanks for being here, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, Jeff said, "My win is you guys for let <coughs> for reminding me that my mom was an organ donor and hearing how she helped a blind girl with her sight and beyond happiness to me." Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Chaz said, my win is having Nolan meet his hero last Friday night. Uh, it meant so much to have him hang with Dana and, and beautiful Janine. Thanks for coming over and making Nolan smile. And we love you too, brother. Hmm. Brian, today is the best, worst day of my life. My little brother is off to rehab. <clears throat> Went to uh, wash. Wish. Him. Wish, Wish him well. <laughs> Wish him well. And it didn't go well. I'm so happy he's going, but seeing him today was frustrating. Little heavy, but I feel like I can share with this my family. Absolutely. Tim can relate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Holcomb, I won't lie, this past week sucked. I was supposed to be in Virginia with my family for spring break, but I had to stay home because I became very sick the day before we were to leave. I literally sat in the house all week being down. Didn't even want to sign on here tonight, but I did. And it was exactly what I needed. I love you all. Love you too, buddy. Hope you feel better. Nolan does rule. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Mr. Augustine. <clears throat> My win, winning Flyingo. Screw doors of doom, LOL. The new job is going great. Feeling so blessed. Food City has an um, amazing meat department and so glad to be part of the opening of the new store in Cookville, Tennessee. I love my TNL family. This is my favorite uh, night of the week. I feel down a lot in the evenings. The TNL family is a big part of my life. Thank you all so much for being um, in my home with me. Uh, the, the BS meter goes up a bit. <laughs> Mr. Maharishi, we appreciate you. Your dry <laughs> sense of humor. It brings your, us some uh, joy. <laughs> dirty sense of humor. Uh, but ultimately, the best part is that you have a huge heart. And uh, we do know this. Yes, we so do. So we're glad you could come home every other month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, guys. Mr. Dario. Dario. My win is H. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hearing Tim and share yeah. and open up his heart. Uh, thanks, Dario, uh, buddy. I, I love you and I miss you, man. Hope we see you soon. Yep. Absolutely. We, we do. We got a trip in April. We got to set up with yeah, do. Dawn and... All the group. The boys. Wait till McKinnon opens. Yeah. All right. Da, 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 da. <sighs> this is Doug, I think. Hmm. Lost my best friend when we were 19. His organ donation helped eight people. It's one of the things that helped me keep this memory going for me after all these years. It also prompted me to sign my card. Whether we have faith, driving our decisions, or love, others which can lead to charitable quantities <coughs> quality sorry a simple donor card registration can mean so much one day that's a very good point yeah mr travis said his win is being able to get on the river twice this week so far the week's yeah, not over it's not over <laughs> uh well said tim my win is the tnl family and most of <coughs> of all good friends like jazz jerry t uh he keeps me grounded while dealing with my my wife's illness. Yeah. We need those friends. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Calling Mr. Jones. <laughs> That's four? Four That's songs. Four songs tonight. Uh, absolute beauty of a day and just a great day to be alive and outside. Thanks for a great evening of time and family. Have an amazing weekend and week ahead. Ah, oh, thanks, bud. Mr. Troy Tracy, my win is just being here and love the TNL family. Love people catch fish. All yeah, day all long. Day Mr. Bruce's trip to Patagonia, Chile was a trip of a lifetime and getting to see the in laws after years of missing them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it looked like a great trip, Bruce. It's truly, it's hmm. what it's about. It's fun to see that very few people drop off, like yeah. in the beginning yeah. on this part. Mm hmm. All right. Mr. Cole is win this week. Uh, family dinner to celebrate my daughter's birthday. Seems like 23 years have passed in the blink of an eye. I can't wait to celebrate again on the river with our birthday float in a couple of weeks. Time is the greatest gift. Yes, happy birthday, Morgan. It was an awesome, uh, awesome week for her, too. 
Cam's got a new full-time gig, new work truck, relief stress, and happy to be part of a team that appreciates that he gives it all for people who believe in him. Hmm. Mr. Reimer, my win is being able to be myself amongst a great group of people. Isn't that the That's, truth? Whew, yeah, right? That is the truth. Eli's win is he got to play capture flag at school and his team won. Not nice. if I was on the other team. I always <laughs> won. Uh, my win is always looking forward to TNL with you guys. Got to go on a date this week with my wife. Always a great time. Even though it doesn't happen as much as it should these days. Went for a bike ride with my daughter last night. Today I drove out to Canmore. Seen a beautiful sunrise. Lots of game. And the grass is greening up. Bring on the spring. Oh, we noticed man. that the other we day too. We noticed that too, yeah. So, Hillbilly, if you got to come to Old uh, for a date night, Cacao de Cacao Pepe, whatever, check it out. Yeah, I haven't uh, had it. Oh, I'll date night. We got to go on a date night. Uh, <laughs> Janine, the, if you're watching, you're out. Bring the candles. Yeah, so Ken says we're all here for a reason. Some of us don't know why, how we ended up here, but every one of us knows why we stay. Uh, you guys give us that happy lift we all need at the end of the week. I equate you guys to the big happy dog shaking his tail every time you come home. You can't help but smile when you're around it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, family. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's... <laughs> Great analogy. Mr. Baglian, my win is being able to plan my first four-day backpacking trip. Chas, Wade, Colin, Cody, Frankie, Lauren, Elizabeth, all of us headed into the mountains for an epic trip. So pumped. Can't wait for it. Awesome. John, when this week was making the trip home from Texas safe, scoring some Texas live oak lumber. Oh, nice. Using the shop. No, no place, place like home. home. Mr. Roger Beatty, win for the week is just being able to get outside and work in the yard, getting some plants in and starting to replace my deck. Blessings is hearing the stories of people whose lives have been changed because of the generosity of those who love people. Uh, they will never... <clears throat> Me, sorry, they will never meet literally donating their lives to others when there's comes to the end. Mm. Yeah. Joe's win is uh, finalizing a complex Excel template at work for our entire department, ultimately making our work lives easier. Headed back up to Wrangley, Maine tomorrow to fish this weekend. Brook Trout Heaven for the United Ooh. States. Yes. Awesome, Joe. Lord's happy for the spring. Yeah, me too. All right. Oh, yeah. Can't wait till everything's green. New life. Well, we're going to wait five more seconds because you know what that means. My yeah. drink's almost done. It's time to head off to see everybody at tracks. Oh, Oh, man. Jim's in the house. Oh, Mr. Crawford. Yeah. I thought he went to BC and dejected us. Yeah, that's awesome. Looks like he met a, met with Art, 84-year-old tire. Great inspiration, fly fishing since the, since 1956. That's a cool story. Ooh. It's always fun when you meet younger tires. Yeah, it <laughs> is. <laughs> oh, Jim. Jim, Jim, Jim. Oh. oh that's good. <laughs> oh, Barry's here. Hey, Barry. Episode 81 and counting. Oh, man, that's nuts. <laughs> yeah. Brightens up his week. Yeah. Happy motoring. All right, folks. Tracks Pub. Don't go anywhere. I'll kick you in the butt. <laughs> uh, and, uh, <laughs> Dammy's a little late. A little late. <laughs> Jim. Yeah. Oh, uh, I actually started following Chad's Instagram before. I was happy to see he was a part of the community. We all need help and support, and it's inspiring to see him doing. It's absolutely inspiring. Yeah. We do know it's Glenn. The new flashback. Mr. Pipke. All right. The comments have slowed down. Yeah. Next week, we're tying. Oh, what are we? Foam tying? cricket. Foam cricket. Oh, when and the, the cinnamon, cinnamon flying ant. That's so, a good one. if you like foam, foam is home. We are your home. And next Thursday, we invite you to come on home. Oh, it's so sad how far we're down that poster. <sighs> it's I'm crazy. Not, I'm 32 not, flies we've tied. It's nuts. Together with this great group of people. Yeah. Incredible. Incredible. <sighs> oh, it's almost over. Uh, I know. It gives me a little anxiety, to be honest. Uh, what are we going to do on Thursdays? What am I going to do all week? <laughs> That's <laughs> true. my life right now. Maybe go fishing. Uh, I guess. Guiding. 
back to the life. Science, Jim's called an SOS, so we gotta just. Throw it. <laughs> <laughs> He's just upset you called him old. That's yeah. all. <laughs> um, yeah. So Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, Fly Fusion. Uh, I think I Four is playing in Great Falls, Montana this weekend. So make sure you check that out. Norvice is uh, the vice we use. And if you need advice on a Norvice, you're going to give Colin a call at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop because they are awesome. Shore fishing makes sure your scissors are sharp. And I'm just making this all up on the fly. And uh, On the water, fly, really? Water mess. On the fly. Oh, so funny. <laughs> water master rafts, we love you. You could float for years if you could find a river long enough because that raft will not let you down. Until next week, I love you. I'm Dana. I'm Tim. And remember, the best fly part fishing of the- saves lives. It does. Not the Instagram account. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I can feel my body fold against the concrete, but I can't seem to get enough. My mind is fixed on what it wants. I just let you beat me. Looks can be deceiving. Let you get the best of me. In bed with my worst enemy. This is a no go. I just can take cold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. This is a no go. I just can take cold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. So put your hand in mine. Follow me. Let me waste your time. Set up the do some stupid shit. Take a seat. Let me waste your time. So put your hand in mine. Acting like you're into me I know this is hopeless Moving in slow motion Trying to control my thoughts But I can't stop our body talk This is a no-go I just can't take hold This is a danger zone Back up and get me home This is a no-go I just can't take hold This is a danger zone Back up and get me home So put your hand in mine Follow me Stop the time.